Hello, fellow wagtail enthusiasts. Welcome to another lesson on learning wagtail. In this video, we are going to take a little bit of a deeper dive into a particular stream field to sort of understand what's going on behind the scenes. Now, before we get started, don't forget you can subscribe and turn on notifications so that you will always get a notification whenever a new awesome video like this comes out. Now jumping in here, I'm just going to open up my terminal. I'm already in my directory and I'm just going to get into my environment. Now I'm using pipenv, so I'm going to use pipenv shell to get inside of it. However, you might be using something different, Docker, Vagrant, virtualenv, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you're inside your environment and let's go ahead and start our server with manage.py run server 0000, 0, 0, 0 port 8000. And I'm just going to open this up in Firefox, just to make sure that everything is working fine. And everything is cool. So what I would like to do in this video is I'm going to go into my admin here. And I am simply going to go into this about page. And I would like to create a brand new stream field in here. But so far, I believe we've only actually used struct blocks, we haven't used a particular stream field. So a struct block will allow you to have multiple fields like this. But what if you only want a car field or a char field, or you only want a URL or one specific piece of information, maybe you only want to be able to give people the ability to upload uh, or select an image, and that's it. That's what we're going to explore here. So I'm inside my about page. And I know that this is a flex page. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new stream field. And I'm going to show you how to do this. So first of all, let's open up blocks.py. And let's just split that over or move that over. Now in our blocks.py is where we have all of our stream fields. And we can see that we're importing stream fields from wagtail.core importing blocks. So I'm actually going to copy that into my clipboard. And we can see we have title and text, we've got a card block in here, rich text block, that one is just a rich text block. That's a good one. Another rich text block a CTA block, which has a bunch of different fields in it. Uh, and a struct value, that's a pretty good one. We learned about that. So if you're unfamiliar with what a struct value is, you can always go and watch that video. But we don't have just a regular char field in here. Now the way we currently know how to do this through this video series is to create a new class, we'll call it, we'll call it custom char field. And we're just going to inherit blocks dot struct block and I'll move that down. And then we'll put, you know, our meta values and, and a blocks dot char block in here. But instead of doing that, what we can do is we can also just specify a char block. Now by writing pass in here, I'm not passing in any metadata, I'm not passing in anything additional, it is simply saying use this. Now this is actually sort of a waste because well, why would we write two lines of code when we could access blocks.char blocks straight from wherever we're putting our stream fields in? Now, what I mean by that is let's open up our flexmodels.py and we have some stream fields in here. So if this is just passing, this isn't doing anything extra, why even write this? Well, we don't have to. So I'm going to get rid of that. Go into our models.py and First, I'm going to import this. So we already have an import called blocks, and we can't have two. So I'm going to rename this one, I'm going to do from wagtail.core import blocks as stream field blocks, I guess we'll call it stream field blocks. And then down here, what we can do is simply call this, I don't know, char block, I guess, not blocks, we want stream blocks, and then char block. And so my whole thing kind of just looks very, very familiar. But the difference is that we're not writing our own code, we're letting Wagtail do all the heavy lifting here. So let's go ahead and save this and refresh our page. And now we have a char block in here. So with one line of code, we have a brand new stream field. Now that's pretty powerful stuff right there. But we don't have help text, we don't have a minimum length or maximum length. In fact, we don't even know what all the attributes are. So let's go take a look at that now. In our char block, what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to hit function F12 on a Mac. Uh, I believe it's just F12 on Windows, although don't hold me to that. I can't remember off the top of my head. But essentially all that I'm going to be doing here is I'm using my, my editor's ability to jump to a definition. And so by hitting function F12, it brought me to this file called fieldblock.py. Now this is not actually inside of our project right now, it's inside of our packages. And VS Code was nice enough to let me know that this was accessible without having to actually display it in the sidebar here. So that's really nice. Now I'm just going to resize this and move this one over. That's not at all what I had intended, there we go. So we have this char block here. And in this char block, we have init. Now if you're familiar with Python, let's just make that a little bigger. Now if you're familiar with Python, you know that init is basically the magic constructor method that when you start or initiate or instantiate a char block, you can also pass in required help text, max length, min length, validators, or any other keyword arguments. And those are exactly the fields that we can use here. So we have required help text, max length, min length, and validators. And you can see that all of these are being assigned self.field, and that's all coming from field block. So we can assume that if we go back to our models.py, we can put in required is equal to true. And maybe let's just put this on separate lines just to make this a little cleaner here. Required is equal to true. Let's do help text is equal to, oh wow, this is help text. Let's set a min length of, I don't know, 10 and a max length. And you can actually see that VS Code is filling this out for me, so that's nice, but if you're using a different editor, you may not have this feature, and that's totally okay too. I'm gonna to show you how to find all these properties of this method if you don't have uh, an editor that can jump like this. So uh, let's finish this up with max length is equal to 50. And I'm just going to save that. Refresh my page. And let's create a new char block. Oh wow, this is help text. And what if I try to save this with just one, two, three? We know the min length is supposed to be 10. Oh, look at that. Needs at least 10 characters. It currently has three. So we know that the validation is working. The help text is automatically there. So far, this is working really, really well. Now, if you don't have jump in your editor, for whatever reason, maybe you're using Docker, you are going to want to go to the GitHub repo, so github.com slash wagtail slash wagtail. And the way I would navigate this is, uh, let's actually start at the very beginning with our blocks.py. So we are importing from wagtail.core import blocks. So we need to find this directory. Now we know in Python notation that this is a folder and this is either a folder or a file and this is either a file or a function or a class. But essentially this is telling us where to look. So we want to look in the wagtail core. So let's open up GitHub. And this is the actual PyPy package. So let's just skip past that and go straight into wagtail. This is where the wagtail code actually lives. And we wanted wagtail.core. So now we have wagtail here. And we can see this in the URL. So if we check up here, it says wagtail slash core, wagtail.core, very similar. Uh, we were importing blocks, which is a folder. And blocks was simply a folder, so instead of actually importing a method or a function or a particular file, it's importing the whole folder and it's accessing init.py. And init.py is going to tell us what it's using in here. So now, in my editor, you can see that I'm on the char block. And we know it's got to be somewhere in this repo, or in this folder rather, in this directory. And where is this going to come from? Well, we know char block is the one that we want. We know it's not a struct block. It's not a stream block. It's probably a field block. So let's do this. Let's look in here for, there it is, char block. So you can always look in the repo. Looking through the repo is a little bit slower, but you'll find all the exact same code. It's literally the exact same code. 
And again, the values that we're able to give the stream field are required help text, max length, min length, and validators. Validators we're not going to touch on because that's going to make this video a little bit lengthy. However, it is basically the exact same concept. You just need to pass in what looks like a tuple of validators. Now, if you're ever wondering, oh, what's in a text block? Well, you can see the same thing here. Required help text, max length. This one has one called rows. Uh, let's take a look at, do, 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 we have another one in here. We've got a decimal block. A decimal block will take required help text, max value, min value, max digits, decimal places, and validator. So these all come with slightly different options, although they are somewhat variations of each other, which is really, really nice. Now that is nice, consistent code, which means generally speaking, you can always pass in required and help text. A lot of these will have max length and min length if they are if they are character based. So that's how you look for this without the jump feature in your editor. Now let's go ahead and put something in here. Let's put something in here. And I'm going to publish this page. And let's go view live. So this stream field automatically shows up with all my other stream fields. And you can see it's unstyled. And we actually need this to be a little more styled, otherwise all of our content's always gonna hang to the very left and there's not gonna be any spacing, especially if you're trying to make a beautiful website, this just does not float anybody's boat. So let's go ahead and edit this template. Now before we do that, we need to figure out what template this is using. And this is a tricky one here. So I'm just going to open up my dev.py and in our last video, we disabled Django debug toolbar just because it was taking a long time to load. But we had noticed that this page in particular wasn't taking a long time to load, it was just the edit view in the Wagtail admin. So let's go ahead and give this a refresh, and this will give us Django Debug Toolbar. And we're looking for templates here. So we want something that is most likely called, what am I looking at here? Most likely car, called charblock charblock.html, something along those lines. So we have flex page, base, item admin, item base, item page explorer. We have all sorts of wagtail admin stuff in here, user bar stuff. Uh, these are our stream fields. These are ones we've made in previous videos. But it doesn't look like our char block is in here. We have a CTA block and a card block, but not a char block. So now we need to tell wagtail, hey, Use a custom template. Don't use whatever Wagtail is giving us, which is probably just rendering this as a string. Please use a template instead. And we do that by going back to our code. And we are simply going to put in a parameter in here called template. And let's call that, or let's give it streams charblock.html. And when we refresh our page, we will get a 404 ish error, a template error technically should this ever decide to load with debug toolbar on. There we go, template does not exist. And it is looking for streams slash char underscore block dot html. So let's go ahead and make that exist. Let's go into our templates. Where are you templates? Oh, right there. Yeah, it was already open, look at that. New file, let's call it char block dot html and Give it a thing in here. So this is not our value that we've passed to the stream field. And I'm also going to turn off debug toolbar just because it's going to be slow to load. And so you can see that this did not display our actual value that we gave the stream field. This is whatever we hard coded in here, but it is now honoring the template we told it to use, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, if we go back to our char block, we're going to want to give this some bootstrap styling. So let's give it a container. Let's give it a row and let's give it col sm10 and offset small one. And uh, let's do this once more. Char test. This is just going to be large text. And then underneath it, it is simply going to be self because we're referencing itself. And when I refresh, you can see it says char text here. That is my hard coded title. We can see that this is lining up nicely now. So this is actually honoring our template. When we inspect our element, we can see that we have col sm10 offset one. We have a row and container in here. And we have let's put something in here, which is if we go back to our page and edit, exactly what we had written in our stream field. 
So I'm just gonna clean this up, get rid of that line, and let's go and refresh our page once more. And we are good to go. So in this video, this is essentially our first deep dive into a stream field. We've worked with some stream fields before, but we've never actually looked at the fields that come with them. And again, if you have jump, by all means, definitely leverage that feature in your editor. But if you don't have the jump to definition feature in your editor, you can always just go straight to the Wagtail repo, or better yet, you can clone down the repo and you can open it up in your editor and just do a search for example, for class char block, because you know this is a class, so you can just do a text search for class char block and it'll find it for you. And then you will be able to see what is required in here. Not required, you'll be able to see the attributes that are available in every stream field, really. And it's always going to be on the init method. Now, if you're wondering why it's always the init method, and I think I might have skipped over that little bit there, it's always the init method because this magic constructor, this is what makes object oriented programming, well, object oriented programming in Python. So you instantiate a class and then you also give it some defaults. So in here, we instantiated our class and we gave it some defaults. So it looks a lot like a function, but it's actually just a class. And then you can access required help text, min length, max length, and template inside of that class inside of other functions as well. Now that's all there is for this video. Pretty easy. This one was a lot more conceptual than it was actually writing some code, but it's always good to know what is accessible to you and how to access it. I'm going to commit this code, put it up in the Learn Wagtail repo. You can find that link in the description down below. My name is Caleb Tallin. Thank you for tuning in today. And don't forget, if you like this video, you can share, subscribe, or leave a comment down below. Actually, in fact, if you could leave a comment down below, that would be great. Just let me know what kind of stream fields you might be interested in seeing next. I do have a few stream field deep dive videos planned out just to sort of get an idea of how all these stream fields work and the available attributes that we can, we can work with and leverage and, and customize. So if you have a stream field in mind that you'd like to see uh, customized or we can dive into a little bit more, just leave that comment down below. And lastly, you can always join our Slack community at wagtail.io slash Slack. Or if you just want to binge watch all these videos or watch something specific about Wagtail, you can always go to wagtail.io slash course. And the written tutorials are always available on learnwagtail.com.